High Strangeness in a New York Library June 7, 2019. Back in the early summer of 1967 thanks to an introduction made by a woman named J.P. Paro, a host on Babylon New York WBAB station John Keel met with a girl who had a fascinating story to tell. It was a disturbing story too. Given the controversial nature of the affair, Keel agreed to always, and only, refer to her as Jane. As Keel noted, he was a very sensitive woman, more ethereal than sensual. There was almost something mystical about her appearance and grace. At the time in question, there was a wealth of very unsettling activity going on in the Mount Misery area of Huntington, New York, a place about which researcher Arthur Creese Choney says, Ocals have called the area Mount Misery for centuries but you will never find it written that way on any map. It got its name because of its unfarmable land in the steep hills. Since the area was not conducive to farming it became a crossroads between farming communities and the difficult trek caused many a wagon wheel to snap. The foreboding area was, and still is, a veritable magnet for paranormal activity, ghostly, glowing-eyed, and black-haired hounds prowl around the landscape. Mysterious, black cars cruise the roads. And spectral children and adults some of a classic handum hitchhiker variety wander along the old pathways, always by night. And then there are Mount Misery UFOs, sightings of which reached their peak in the early months of 1967. Not surprisingly, the local kids immediately caught wind of the reports. And, as a result, on dark, weekend nights, girl and boyfriends would drive around the area, looking for flying saucers, and, under canopies of trees and darkness, doing what young lovers do on Saturday nights all around the world. This included Jane and her boyfriend, Richard. It was one particularly chilly and dark Saturday evening in mid-May 1967 when Jane and Richard were driving around the roads of Mount Misery and when Richard, quite out of the blue, fell ill. He managed to pull the car to the side of the road, immediately after which he fainted at the wheel. Panic-stricken Jane didn't know what to do. As it transpired, the decision of what to do next was suddenly, and violently, taken out of her by now clammy hands. A near-blinding white light flooded the vehicle, having originated somewhere in the deep, almost impenetrable, woods that surrounded the car. Jane found herself completely immobilized in her seat by some unseen, paranormal force. It clear there was a degree of missing time involved, since the next thing the couple remembered was driving along Mount Misery Old County Road some distance from where all of the terror exploded. That was barely the start of the high strangeness, however. A couple of days later Jane experienced something that is a common factor in UFO encounters, an odd and somewhat disturbing telephone call. The mysterious woman at the other end of the line did not identify herself to Jane, but in a weird, italic-sounding style instructed Jane to go to her local library, to ask the staff for a specific book on Native American history and to then turn to page 42 and read it very carefully. It was an extremely curious request one which bordered upon an order, but Jane felt oddly drawn to follow the instructions of her anonymous woman in black. Jane reached the library around mid-morning. Even her arrival was dominated by profound oddities, aside from the librarian and Jane herself. The building was completely empty of people and was vacuum-like in its silence and stillness. As for that same librarian, well, her hair was black. Her eyes were airy black, her skin was olive, and her black-colored outfit was curiously out of time. In Jane's words, the woman in black was dressed in an old-fashioned suit like something out of the 1940s, with a long skirt, broad shoulders, and flat old-looking shoes. Most astonishing of all, before Jane could say anything, the woman handed her from under a desk a copy of the very book Jane had been instructed to seek out by her mysterious caller. Jane, unsettled but determined to find out what was going on, took a seat, opened the book and turned to page 42. As she did so, the writing on the page changed from large to small, and back again, several times. Rather amazingly, the writing then did something else. It magically morphed into a message. Jane was able to remember the entire length message word for word something which suggested it had been subliminally implanted in her mind. She carefully wrote it down. Good morning, friend. You have been selected for many reasons. One is that you are advanced in auto-suggestion. Through this science we will make contact. I have messages concerning Earth and its people. The time is set. Fear not. I am a friend. For reasons best known to ourselves you must make your contacts known to one reliable person. To break this code is to break contact. Proof shall be given. Notes must be kept of the suggestion state. Be in peace.
With that, Jane stood up from the chair and closed the book. The mysterious woman was nowhere to be seen. Jane was all alone in a deserted, silent library. To say she fled the place in terror would be an understatement.